What do you see when you close your eyes and think of the words Beverly Hills Cop? Eddie Murphy cracking wise and kicking ass? Judge Reinhold being a lovable goofball? A third thing. And what do you hear? Oh, I already know what you hear. It goes a little something like this. Well, tough shit, because absolutely none of that is in Beverly Hills Cop for the PlayStation 2, released in 2006 Six. by Blast Entertainment, purveyors of only the highest quality shovelware. Instead of Eddie Murphy, we have a mute, bald lump of clay. Instead of Judge Reinhold, we have standard white guy model number three. And instead of the iconic Axel F, we have this. When I saw this game on the shelf in a game store, I shouted out loud, they made a game of this? Which happened also with The Sum of All Fairs, Little Britain, and Shutter Island. Seeing the Beverly Hills Cop logo right underneath the black PlayStation 2 bar already raised an eyebrow, but the main element of the cover art being an empty car just made that eyebrow fly off into space. Obviously, there's a story here. Beverly Hills Cop, the official game of the intellectual property, was developed by Atomic Planet Entertainment, who also made Carol Vorderman's Sudoku, the PC version of Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown, and another classic 80s property, Miami Vice. And I'm sure they delivered exactly what they were contracted to deliver. And my friends, you may be absolutely shocked here, but it isn't good. Oh, it really isn't good. Now I'm going to preface this by admitting that my core memory of the Beverly Hills Cop franchise isn't the excellent first movie or the sequel, which was basically the same film, but with less heart. No. It was coming home after a long day of school under the hot Aruban sun, plopping myself in front of the TV, switching to Channel 17, the USA Network, and zoning out entirely until dinner time while shit like Beverly Hills Cop 3 played. Brief flashes of Axel running around a theme park as a costumed mascot, some plot about money laundering, and a campy European man selling a precursor to the gun from the fifth element were permanently seared into my brain through passive repetition. Even through that CRT haze, I could tell that this was not the high point of the franchise. But who could possibly know that it wouldn't be the low point either? This is a first-person shooter. You have handgun. You have shotgun. You have other gun. See those people? You can shoot them with gun. You probably should shoot them. They're shooting at you. But watch out. Sometimes you need to not shoot them. Don't expect the stealth sections to feel good or be fun or have any kind of positive impact on your life whatsoever. Even stealth sections in good games are usually frustrating and annoying, so them being included in this is basically a crime. There are six entire levels taking place in such exciting environments as garage, warehouse, and dock. Isn't Beverly Hills beautiful? And because this is a low, low budget game, they're used very efficiently. Which is to say you'll be backtracking and forth tracking a whole lot through them. The story is Axel Foley, streetwise and reckless Detroit cop, gets called to LA by one of his friends from the movies and then commits mass murder or something. So in that way, not too different from the films. But there's a couple of things lacking from this package. Voice acting for one. Yep. There's not a single line of voice dialogue in this game starring a character known for being a smartass with a big mouth. Instead, you have to read. To compensate for this, there is a weird dialogue minigame type thing where you can out-talk certain enemies using a bizarre Russian roulette system. I get the intent. It's to give a sliver, a tiny spark of Axel Foley to the mannequin that is supposed to represent him, but it doesn't work. It's not enough. The enemy AI is dumb as rocks, which sometimes works for you, sometimes against you. This game does one of those classic bad game things where there are tremendous spikes in difficulty due to clunky combat encounter design, or because the game does a poor job communicating the current goal to the player. It'll be one of those things where you're at this particular section of the warehouse for the third time in a single mission to find a switch or document or something, and out of nowhere a couple dozen more dudes spawn because combat equals gameplay. There's only two ways to actually beat games like this. Number one, cheese, cheese, cheese. Find that corner that the AI is somehow blind to and take pot shots. Number two, emulator save states. This would have been torture without emulator save states. Well, worse torture. 
And I'm not even going to go too deep into the graphics, the muddy textures, the homunculoid models, the stiff animation, the lighting or lack thereof, how slow Axel walks, how most of the game is devoid of music at all, just the occasional environmental sound effect for ambiance. Just as a point of reference, Criterion's Black came out the same year. It's not a fair comparison at all, but it does illustrate the massive gulf between the bottom and top of the barrel of PS2 first person shooters. When the music does kick in, it's only during what I guess are supposed to be cinematic moments, but then just suddenly stops in the middle of the action. However, however, the music, it's kind of good. It's no Axel F and it mainly serves as a reminder that it's not Axel F, but it's decent, fun 80s synth. In any other game, you'd be like, eh, not bad. Second good thing, the strip club infiltration level. I mean, it isn't good because it's more of this game, but you have to pretend to be a waiter, sneak your way backstage, question the dancers while avoiding the guards, and eventually find your way into the boss's office. How come this cheap game with this many shortcuts still has an interesting non-combat mission? How am I supposed to reconcile that shit? Does this mean the developers were human beings with dreams of making something that can be seen as good by someone? Anyone? Third good thing, there's this moment near the very end of the game. You're assaulting the bad guy's mansion, and you enter a room and there's this guard manning a minigun mounted on a banister. And to get past him, you gotta shoot the pillar to collapse the walkway. It's clunky and bad and exactly the way the rest of the game is, but the collapsing animation is curiously elaborate. And more importantly, it ends with this one last pillar section falling with a thump and a particle effect and everything. Just like a real game. I hope whichever dev on the team was responsible for that found a better home after this. Fourth good thing, the game is mercifully short, about three hours with save state spamming. And that's all the good. I don't think it's enough to say games like this are bad or lazy. For one, lazy is a dirty word that you shouldn't use for anything except just being chill. And bad is such a broad term that can apply to anything. What makes a game bad? This is a question that doesn't have a simple answer. Ugly presentation? Plenty of great ugly looking and sounding games out there. Bad controls, bad story, bugs. You will find examples of widely celebrated games that contain all of these and more. Or even critically panned games that are considered cult classics now. Another question that I find more interesting. What makes a bad game? What are the circumstances that lead to a game being bad? The grim realities of labor under capitalism, of the predatory nature of the game industry, how it chews up and spits out developers by the thousands, lack of time or budget, a scope and ambition that exceed a developer's talents, maybe. Again, no easy answers. Making games, even cheap branded tie-ins, is extremely difficult. Some developers try and fail, some don't try at all, and some try and succeed at exactly what the contract was. I mean, it's easy and accurate to blame Blast Entertainment for presumably giving Atomic Planet exactly $5 and three weeks of crunch to deliver this. But on the other hand, I have also seen a different type of very efficient use of resources in games like The Mummy Returns, which are still bad, but not this. Beverly Hills Cop for PS2 isn't just bad. The how of its badness is remarkable. It's shockingly bare bones. It's breathtakingly simplistic. It's a staggering misuse of a property with plenty of video game potential. It didn't need to be Scarface the world is yours, but how hard would it be to make a decent Axel Foley game really? On paper, this game does almost everything it needs to. There's an excuse to bring Axel back to LA, there's shootouts, there's even an attempt at using Axel's high charisma stat. And yet it fails on all of those levels and every single level beyond. The game is just as notable for what it has as for what it doesn't have. No voice acting, no Beverly Hills Cop theme, 
no car chases, barely any characters or story, no references to the movies, hardly anything to actually tie it to the property it's supposed to be a part of. But this is Blast Entertainment. They were never interested in making a game that would review well or that players would enjoy. They wanted to slap a logo on something at the very edge of minimum viable product. They had a simple formula. We'll spend exactly $100 on creating this game and make $110 back and we'll call that a win. That's why Beverly Hills Cop the Game is bad.